I decided to put it a little bit about dreams and visions. Uh, you can't read how to interpret dreams by books. There is nobody on earth that God has come to and said, this color means this, that color. That is how witches do it. That is how psychics do it. Fortune tellers do it. This is their way of interpreting dreams okay uh nobody can come and tell you uh unless they're really anointed to interpret dreams and visions without following instructions that this obstacle means this and this object means that and this means none of those things mean anything that is the way the world does it and they incorporated it into the Christian world. Just the same way with psychology. This is narcissism. This is this. And, and they incorporated that and studied psychology and then mixed it with Christianity. Instead of studying God, and God can take you out of all of that. But see, they didn't do that. They, they took, this is how... This is why I say that a lot of them don't even know what they're talking about. They took their studies, their intelligence, and everything else. God tells you plainly that in man's wisdom, he didn't want God. He didn't need him. So God uh, called into being the foolishness of preacher, preaching the cross, the only way to be saved. And then he clearly told you what the uh, doctrine of Christ was. But they took it according to so-and-so way, way back. This is what they taught. This was their doctrine. This is what they refused. This is what they didn't. And they sifted, and I would say, and just made it till it became the form that they have today. And it's a form of doctrine. And they really believe in that to the point that they believe that Nobody, no woman could have Jesus Christ without a man when Jesus Christ is her man. Jesus Christ is her head. But the, he gave the man the head as protection. See, he, he put that man over her because God created him bigger and stronger and, and everything in a lot of ways so that she would have protection. But see, they don't protect her. They kick her out and they say... Oh, you can't have nothing without me. How oh, foolish. Ooh. Never mind that God sees one, not two. How do you kick half of you out and say, no, you can't have God? Well, she's just as foolish, and I put the video out. She's just as foolish because when she sees you won't go where you need to go in her head, you won't do what you need to do in her head, then she kicks you out and she takes over. Both are wrong, but both are never taught in church. What they're taught is submit yourself to a man, submit yourself to your pastor, submit yourself. Never mind if that pastor is sinning, never mind if the man is sinning, never mind if they don't know what they're talking about. Submit, submit, submit. They don't tell you that God says what it means when he says that your body is not yours, it's his, and his body is not yours, it is, it's yours. Never mind that. That's do, equal, together. That isn't this. But you fight because you've been taught in church that you must have power over everybody. After all, you're the head of the house. And God made you head. Well, Jesus Christ never forced any woman to follow him. Never forced his mother. Never forced anybody. Because Jesus is not a force. You can use the word to compel them to come in to the banquet table. Uh, you know, whenever they're they're feasting, 
and you can compel them to come in, but you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So you can pray and force somebody to do what you think that they're going to do, but you can't make Jesus Christ come into the heart and mind of anybody. You can't. That comes directly from God. And if God never forced you to serve him or love him, why would he force a woman to serve you like she's a slave and has to do everything according to your pleasure, according, she better waken up. My goodness. And the woman, she's just as bad. Because either she submits to you like a slave and looks at God like as I'm called to be garbage and I'm called to be nothing. And he wipes his feet off on me. He goes and he cheats on me. But I have to submit to him. Even if he brings home a disease to me and my children, I have to submit to him. I am so, oh, I am just so much nothing. I can't do this and I can't do that without him. I will never have you without him. I must go through him. And if I don't please him, I can't go through him. I don't know what to do, God. Wow. That is about the size of it. And him, <laughs> he's working that on you. Control. That's witchcraft. The power to control your family through this. See, this is your prayers. And you take them and you say, you're going to do this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command it to be this way. I am head. God is not with you. That isn't God at all. Jesus never did that to your soul. Never. That telephone call was from a man who had a dream that was troubling him for a couple of years. He never knew what it meant. And so and I've had people, you know, that something uh, troubled them for 10 years. They never knew what it meant. But when the truth was spoken to them, boom, it finally disappeared. Excuse me. So this young man, uh, I told him the things I'm telling you. Colors, uh, objects. It The dream means something the way it meant for Daniel and the way it meant for Joseph. God gave the interpretation for that time, for that moment, for that person. The same thing with the Pharaoh. That time, that moment, that person. Just like with you. He will give an interpretation for that time, that moment, and you. He's not going to give it with a, a form, a book. Boy, you know, it amazes me. People would rather read a ritual in a form before they take communion, and, and they would rather read a form of what someone told them something else me, means rather than listen to what God says it means directly. But that is what I wanted to tell everybody about dreams and visions. Now, if you have somebody that is wise enough to know how to interpret dreams and know what I'm talking about, uh, somebody that, that God may be called to do, be gifted, but if they're going by what they learned in a book, they're out, they're out of course. You're going to get deceived every time. If they're going by what uh, somebody else told them or taught them, you're going to get deceived every time. Because you're going to have to go by what God says at that moment. And sometimes God uses dreams for, for warnings. When, when you hear a pastor say, like I did just this past week, and I don't listen to very many, and I don't listen to them at all, actually. God will say, listen to this, and I'll hear what they're saying, and I'll know it's wrong. And, and I'll say, dreams are just that. They're dreams. Well, you know. The angels came and spoke in dreams to Joseph and Mary. And you can't deny that. That's, that happened. And you can't say, well, that was for that day. It'll never happen now because that's not true either. Uh, you want to deny the power of God in your life? Go ahead. 
they have a form of god godliness and they deny the power thereof you sound real good you have sound like you have sound doctrine you're the only one knows you built on the rock but yet when the rock came to help you build you rejected the rock the rock was jesus christ the reality of jesus christ you cannot reject and have everything built because what you have built is going to fall when you do to others and in destroying them because they're not like you and you're positive you are the only one that has the truth you've got a problem Tell, revealing the truth knowing the truth about someone else if you were in an authority to do so is not a sin if you're not in authority you're minding somebody else's business it's none of your business so you're the one that has to sift all of that out i don't i don't have to do none of it because it's your life it's your walk with god it's your discernment it's your truth you and jesus not me i have nothing to do with it that's why i don't bother to trouble over it i don't get upset over it nothing that's why if you spit in my face it does not matter to me because I'm not here to make you listen to anything. Make them, Lord, is manipulation. You're using your prayers to manipulate people. And you say, make them. Reveal the truth to them, Lord. Open up their hearts and their minds to the truth. Not my truth. Not my doctrine. But the doctrine of Christ is Jesus has come in the flesh. And he, when you die to self, he will live in the flesh in you. He, he will live in your fleshy body. And he'll have, you'll have the spirit just like he did. But you will fulfill your purpose. So if God wants you to use it for your children, because I'm telling you, don't desert your household and think you're called out there because you are not that household will teach you exactly how to minister to anybody else and god may send you some in between but you can't get entangled in the lives of other people you must know and understand how to handle your own 